My background is uh, sustainability in motorsports. Uh, I've always been working in that field. I used to work for Michelin, the tire manufacturer, and then I ended up uh, working in Formula E, starting and implementing the sustainability strategy. And I must say it was quite uh, a dream because uh, when you are uh, a sustainability and motorsport expert, it's probably the best place on earth to be working and implementing your projects, really. Urgent action is needed. With the trends that we see in the world, uh, climate being all over the place, uh, especially with the climate youth action going on at the moment, and all the importance of like purpose-driven brands like ours, with a real mission like for the better and for the planet, or let's say for the people on the planet. And what you see here is the change happening now in terms of mobility, and mobility in terms of emissions represent like a fourth of the emission tomorrow a third of the emissions globally. Race by race and season per season life cycle assessment, which is kind of like the state of art uh, carbon footprint assessment that you can, you can do. And that's a very useful tool because it's a decision making tool. So you know what are your biggest uh, impact areas and then you know what to do and what to target to try and reduce as much as possible. We follow the UNFCCC, so that's the climate change branch uh, of United Nations uh, protocol, so it's measuring, reducing and then offsetting. We are currently in the reducing phase and we want to introduce for next season some new reducing, reducing measures. The potential and the power of the platform in pushing the technology, changing the perception about driving electric vehicles and most importantly improving the air quality in the cities is 10 like 100 times more important than the few emissions that we would have emitted as a championship and I must say like taking into account we are a global circus traveling around the world our footprint is relatively limited really. The technology push in Formula E, probably the best illustration we can take is the fact that from season one to season five, we've been able to double the battery technology, the battery capacity. And that was huge because the main thing to break the barrier regarding the technology in terms of adopting electric vehicles was the range anxiety. The battery is now lasting the entire race. So we are showing that literally and actually today with all the manufacturers we have in these garages, battery range is a problem from the past. So now what we're going to focus on, which is the last kind of like in between technological and infrastructure issue, is the fast charging. And this is the problem that now we are tackling for the next generation of the cars, the Gen 3. The vision of Formula e regarding the future of mobility is five words, electric or cars, clean, the way we charge our cars, connected, all the IT and so on that you can see in the cars, but also the IT that will be present in the cities to make sure that like the traffic flow is much like much more efficient, shared. The way we see the future in cities is that we're going to share transportation, like it, including cars and very kind of like forward thinking, but that is going to happen quickly. It's driverless cars. And that's why when we started working with RoboRace at the beginning of the championship, it was a very important hint into the future of what mobility in the cities will be because basically you're going to order your car on your phone, it's going to come and take you, driverless, take you to the supermarket, go and get, I don't know, your neighbor that wants to go to the gym, bring him and in the meantime you're, you're done with your shopping and then it takes you back. And all this will be optimized and autonomous.